Hello, BookTube. It's Tuesday. It's time for a tag. I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. I don't have internet, so again, this might not go up on Tuesday, but I thought what I'd do is record it. If it's short enough and it's not epic length, I will try to tether my uh, tablet to my phone and try my data on my mobile and see if it'll upload there. How long it'll be or whether it'll eat everything up, I don't know. But let's get to it. It's a tag called What Makes Me Pick Up a Book. I saw it originally on Bill Rutenberg's channel, and I've watched it on the Bookish Bryants. And um, it's created by Wonderfully uh, Bookish, but I saw it uh, again this just a little while ago on Mark Richardson's uh, Richardson Reads channel. So, question one. Do you judge a book by its cover? Um... Not solely, but it is a factor in purchasing a book in many cases, uh, especially a book that I've had before or I want to get another copy or uh, upgrade from paperback to hardcover or vice versa, uh, and I haven't read it in a long time, that it will be a big judge. Uh, I will judge it based on that cover. I want to get a cover that I really like, um, but it's not the sole, the sole thing. Uh, but it all it is part and parcel of, of my book buying. Number two, focusing on just to cover what attracts you to pick pick it up. Well, a number of things. Like, for instance, uh, Penguin have this distinct um, design. And to me, uh, if I see a Penguin book, even, you know, you know from the, the spine, regardless of what incarnation uh, it is of theirs and what period, it to me signifies it's probably worth my attention to at least look at um so that is judging um but it's it's judging it uh, i guess in a sense uh, the cover for that reason uh and uh the oxford world classics classics are the same but getting back to something that i've that i want to uh, reread that i haven't read for a while and i no longer have copies of it for instance the isaac asimov um, foundation robot series there's like 14 books uh, Harper Voyager have put out recently uh, paperback reprints with some amazing covers, or at least I find them amazing. And I wasn't really, I'm not really ready to reread yet, but soon I will. But I saw those covers and I go, I better get those in case they disappear because sometimes special covers disappear very quickly. And here's an example of one of them. Uh, this is Robots and Empire. I just love the design. They all have this similar design. The only downfall is, well, there's two things. It's paperback. I'd love to have all this stuff in hardcover, nice hardcovers. Uh, and the paper is not that good quality. It's sort of better quality newsprint. So it's a bit shame on them for, for doing that. But there's the back. Um, and there's the spine. They all basically have the, the uh, similar design. And another one here is that I wanted to buy some old, uh, I wanted to read some old um, crime fiction. And I was looking at stuff, thinking of buying old editions, which uh, sometimes are kind of expensive, where they used to be dime a dozen. Um, uh, Steve Donahue just reminded me the other day about E, uh, oh, is it o, e. Philip, uh, o. Phillips Oppenheim? E. Phillips Oppenheim, I think it is, yeah. Uh, brain uh, freeze there. Uh, and, and then, you know, it reminded me of Sax Romer, uh, Edgar Wallace, which I like. Used to see these things by a dozen, and uh, I, used to, I used to love reading them and buying the old editions. Now they're difficult to get, or more difficult, and a little more pricey. So I, I, I stumbled upon a hardcover series that Collins, they're doing their reprints of their Collins Crime Club. And I just and they're facsimile covers. They're not the best made books. Uh, they're perfect binding. They're paper covered boards. But I just love the covers, and I've got probably about three quarters of them. I don't think they've continued with them, and it is something that I should start getting the rest of them because they are ones that I will want to keep. Um, and I'm slowly reading through these, and then also too, uh, there's the uh, British Museum um, series of crime classics that, that they're doing. So I've got those. Those are in paperback. I should have grabbed one to show, but uh, I like the design of those as well. So where are we now? Uh, question three. 
do you read the synopsis first or do you prefer to go without knowing anything about the book? I always re read it first and I'll even reread it when I'm going through. Uh, for instance, like on the back here, I'll read, I'll read that again, uh, before I read the book and I've probably read it when I picked it up, uh, when I got it, um, anything in the beginning, like little, um, you know, a little bio of Asimov, I'll read, uh, I'll, I'll read all those things, even because sometimes the review blurbs are, are fun to read because you'll, you'll see similar names pop up or similar authors, similar critics, but it's fun to see like how they try to, uh, you know, the, the, whoever chose the, the quote either from their longer one or they, they just quote a word, amazing, astounding. Uh, you know, and I, I, I find it uh, fun to read those. Uh, number four, do you have any autobi authors? Uh, most for fiction are deceased. <coughs> um, can't think of anybody else um, fiction wise that has really, really attracted me in a long, long time. Um Nonfiction wise, there are still some. Uh, Jonathan Bateman, who does biographies, he did a wonderful biography of of John Clare, and that's where I first discovered him. And then he's done uh, Hughes, uh, the poet Hugh, um, uh, Tom Hughes. Uh, no, um, my brain is a bit fried. Um, Hughes, and uh, but anyway, he's done Wordsworth recently, which I haven't got yet, but it is something that's on my my list and anything he writes like it's interesting topics so there there are things that i'm interested in so i definitely would uh when i see that is something yes i will get uh, lucy worsley is another one historian uh she writes sort of you know um general um ch sort of chatty um uh histories not really in depth but they're they're fun to read um uh, another author is Judith uh, Flanders, which I really like, um, and she's written a lot of stuff that's that's really really good. Uh, Bethany Hughes is another one that I will read anything that she writes. Um, so those are probably the the main authors I would say that would be auto buy for me. Uh, are you more number five? Are you more likely to pick up a book if it includes specific elements or themes? And they list a few here. Uh, example, LGBTQ+, plus, mental health rep, uh, disability rep, etc. Uh, I think, well, obviously this is geared towards fiction. Um, themes for nonfiction, yes. Because if it is covering uh, a subject that I'm interested in, then definitely. But with regards to fiction, not really so much. Uh, there is one possible exception, I guess, uh, would be... Uh, science fiction. I used to uh, seek out and and find uh, books that had archaeology uh, in in the storyline. That was a major part of the storyline uh, because I, I was having a sort of idea theory because I'd read other um, uh, mainstream fiction about archaeology and it was sort of like rolling my eyes most of the time, sort of like a pure Indiana Jones type thing, which is enjoyable but it's not it's not true it's not real uh to the to the real thing and i found that for some reason i think science fiction captures archaeology a lot better than other uh mainstream writing does um number six do you read a book that was generally negative reviews just to form your own opinion of it no it's I, if i see it's negative then it doesn't make any difference on me if it's something I want to read and it wouldn't make me want to read it any more or less. So the answer is no to that. Uh, do you ever buy a book just because another booktuber or book blogger has reviewed it or talked about it a lot? Yes, because uh, I I subscribe to uh, Times Literary Supplements, um, the uh london book of reviews it's mostly to keep sort of up to a certain extent on what is out there and um reading like things that are interesting for me and especially in finding new books in the areas that i'm interested in i don't always find books there but i do occasionally and it's always fun to do that uh, otherwise i may not know about it um and 
Uh, but also too, it's if it's if it seems interesting, I'll read the review uh, just to be aware of the book. And uh, in a good review, like in the Times Literary Supplement review, you get a lot of background of it. It's not just uh, the critic, the the writer saying, "Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good." Uh, they will have a lot of, if especially nonfiction, they will they will give you a lot of information about the subject uh, while you're going through, and that's that's value. That's very valuable to me. Uh, number eight. Is there anyone whose book recommendations you would generally always trust? No one 100% so. Uh, because uh, not everybody has the same interests as me. Um, for instance, like, you know, like for the booktubers, it's like, you know, I, I love... Uh, seeing Steve Donahue open up the mail and get to new things or going through the penguins. And there's occasionally a penguin that I wasn't aware that it was a penguin, uh, all that kind of stuff that I, that I really love. Uh, but Steve reads, um, romance, which I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept, uh, and I wouldn't go out and buy a romance based on he saying it was really great. It's just not for me which is fine. And, uh, Mark Richardson, um, he reads a lot of stuff. That, oh, that's interesting. And I would, I would, uh, pick that up and, and then, then he'll, he'll talk about other books, uh, for instance, about the American uh, revolution. And I find that interesting, but it's not in my reading, um, horizon at the moment. So that's not something that I would, I would buy. So I wouldn't accept everything that somebody would say. I'd pick and choose that are sort of uh, books in my area, especially if they're books about books that I haven't seen. I do love the book tours or shelf tours where it's so fun sometimes to go, oh, I've read that, I've got that, I've read that, I've read that, I've read that. Oh, I don't know about that one. And then I make a list, you know, and if it is something that I'm uh, I'm reading at the time, I will, I will buy it immediately. Uh, other times I just keep a list um, because there's sometimes... Uh, like Peg at the History Shelf. Uh, she did a few uh, shelf tours on, and it's, mo it's mostly American history, but it's like, oh, those are interesting topics. I'll make note of them that if I ever do go, go back, and I do make note of these things, uh, and it's not so much that they they have recommended or done a book review saying it's great. It's sometimes just showing it is, is good enough for me. Um, anyway, I think I'll end it there. It's just uh, be coming up in 13 minutes. I'm going to try to upload this. If it shows up, uh, immediately on the, uh, third, then, you know, it's, um, uh, I've, I've, I've been able to be successful with my data. Otherwise take good booktube and good luck in the election, uh, for the all fellow American, uh, not fellow Americans, but, uh, my fellow booktubers who are, uh, in America. Thank you.